Indeed, faith is the victory. And I love that. That was one of my songs, and I just happened to run across it as I was looking through the hymnal just now. And I think that's important because, watch this, it says that faith is the victory. It doesn't say that seeing is the victory, right? And we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things what? Not seen. So in essence, in essence, as, as soon as you have faith, the victory is won, right? You don't have to wait for it to necessarily manifest. And trust me, by, by all means, one of the challenges that I have is that I want to see things manifest. And that's when I say that I have the victory. And, and, and there's something, there's value in seeing things manifest because that means that what you had faith in has come to pass. But, but the challenge is in having that faith before you've even seen that thing happen. Right? The challenge is, Omar, in understanding that I can have faith that I will graduate from college or that you will graduate from college even though you haven't graduated yet. But, but, but because you have faith that you will graduate from college, that's exactly why you're willing to go and go through this final year of school and put in all the work because you believe that you will graduate and because you believe that you will graduate, you said, okay, I'll graduate. However, I show that I have faith that I will graduate by actually attending. Right? And we show that we have faith here, even though we're a small congregation, we're a small church, and even on some days our numbers may not be exactly what we would like it to be, but we show faith that we expect it to grow because what? We still show up. Right? And so, and so the faith says that when we read the book of Hebrews chapter 11, even though that's not my verse for today, but Hebrews chapter 11 talks about a whole bunch of people who, before they even saw it, they acted. Because they had faith that what they couldn't see would still be made real one day. Right? And so, and so, and so faith is the victory. And so we have to operate from a place of victory. And watch this. I'm talking to myself. I'm even talking to myself. Why? Because the devil... Has, has been acting and working and has been fighting to try to make me, myself, lose faith, right? And he's trying to knock my confidence, right? And that should be expected. That should be expected. Anytime you want to do something good, we can expect that the devil is going to want to try to shake your confidence up. But I don't know why, but for some reason, while I was on my way here this morning, and even as I've been sitting here worshiping with us, even though we're only few here today, something has restored my confidence. And I can't tell you what it is, but I think that it's just Christ saying that, listen, like you can be confident because faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. And so, and so it doesn't matter what you're going through, right? And watch this. I'm even going to talk to somebody who might be watching. Through, I'm recording this right now. And so I'm even going to talk to somebody that might watch this far. They might not be here with us right now, but they might watch this later on. And I want them to be encouraged that faith is the victory, right? And they can be encouraged by Penuel SDA Church that faith, that we can let them know that faith is, in, is the victory. And we have chosen to step out here on faith ourselves here today, right? Being a small church. Because we understand that faith is the victory. And so we pray, Father God, that, that we are coming here, stepping out on faith week after week. Somebody is watching uh, this recording in faith, Father God. Uh, we ask that, that you, would, you would help us to see faith as being the victory. And that when people see our lives, they can tell that us having faith is the victory. That even if we have not seen it yet, Father God, that we would believe that, that we have the victory. But here's, here's the second part to it, Father God. We ask that while we understand that faith is the victory and knowing and seeing and believing before it even comes to pass is the victory, Father God, we ask that you would manifest something because of our faith that people would say that it was good for them to have believed and it was good for them to have faith and that, and that our faith would eventually be made tangible. That, that Watch this, Father God, not, not to prove anything about us, Father God, but to prove that you are simply a God who will do what you said that you will do. And so we believe that you will do it, that you will bring it to pass. All the things we've been praying for, all the things that we have been asking for, that you will bring it, Father God. Now help us as we go through your word and through, and through the word that you have for us today. I ask that you would bless it, that you would prepare our hearts to receive it, Father God, that you would get us ready for it, Lord. In your most holy name I pray. Amen. And so I have a challenge this morning. I have a challenge because I feel like God sometimes makes it difficult for people who preach to preach. Right? And I know that he wants us to preach, 
But I think sometimes he makes it a little bit difficult because he might have us look at something, read something. We might have a plan, you know, that's a good plan, but he might shake things up a little. Or sometimes he might give us a word that we might be a little bit hesitant to know, like, okay, should, should I really give that word? You know, am I even qualified to give that word? Sometimes the challenge is, God, like, am I even qualified to be up here speaking? You know? And so preaching, it can be very challenging because from week to week, you know, what you want to do is pay attention to what God is saying to you so that you can then preach. And the challenge is sometimes God might not say anything to you. He might give you something early and then switch it up or he might switch it up last minute. Or, or, but there's sometimes where you just know clearly, oh, man, I know I've been known that God wants me to say this, <laughs> you know. And so one of the challenges that I have is that the, the scripture reading today is Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. And while that is the scripture reading, I believe that he's also given me another scripture that he wants me to tie into that. And I'm not going to go into that yet, you know, but, but, but the struggle or the wrestling that I did with God this week is, is, is what would you have me to say that is relevant for us where we are today and relevant for our church and what our church is trying to accomplish now? Not just something that just, you know, is just informative or something that's just sound good and just, you know, just it's just accurate as far as the information, but something that we need right here, right now, today. And I believe that he began gave, giving it to me. And so and so I'm uh, pray for me as I as I as I piece all of this together. But Exodus chapter 20, verse seven says in the King James Version, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. That's the King James Version. Message version says, no using the name of God, your God, in curses or silly banter. God won't put up with the irreverent use of his name. God won't put up with the irreverent use of his name. And so this week has been a frustrating week. And frustrating on, a, on, on, on many different levels. You know, and we, we prayed about this earlier that that that. Our church, we, we have some, we might have some people who are being attacked as far as their employment. And we know that if there aren't some people who are, are being attacked now, there's some people who have been attacked in the past as far as their employment, just within the past year. And so one of my frustrations is that I'm, I am one of those people who has been attacked as far as their employment. Right. And a lot of people trying to figure all of this kind of stuff out. Right. And we, we're in a nation now who has been attacked as far as employment goes. Right. And there are a lot of people who are trying to figure out how to make things work when you are in in a in a country that while this country might be one of the wealthiest countries, it's been pretty hard for people to find jobs in this space. Frustrations. You know, I'm still I, I have some frustrations because earlier this week on Sunday, one of my friends from high school that I used to run track with was shot and killed in our hometown. Right. Thirty two years old. And now he, he is dead. Right. Frustrations and, and, and my community. And it's weird because I, I didn't grow up in the hood, but yet it seems that we have just experienced a lot of homicidal deaths in my community and other types of deaths also. So so there are some frustrations that I have talking about frustrations. And I know that Penuel, we here as a church, we have experienced some frustrations also. Right. You are before I even ever even came here. There were some frustrations that was ex were experienced here. Yeah. Right. And so because of those, we're frustrated because we know that that we know what it's like to have a, a, a church that's packed out. Mm -hmm. We know what it's like to see when 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 a group of people are thriving, when when a church is thriving and, and what that looks like. And we know what the, we know what that has felt like. I may not have been here when it was like that. I was in elsewhere, but I have also been places where it was thriving and all, then all of a sudden it seems like it's dwindling a bit. And so and so as a body, as, together, we are experiencing we've experienced and seen some frustrations even here and not just here, because this is just really a microcosm of many churches. I don't care if they're in a big city. A lot of churches have experienced dwindling numbers. Dwindling numbers. And so and so all of a sudden. 
the thought that came to my mind, and, and, and watch this. One of the reasons why I'm, I'm tying this in also with something that happened with me earlier this week. So just yesterday, right, I told you all about some of the some, some challenges. Pastor called me, Pastor Hill called me and he called me out of the blue. This was not we, we had a, a meeting on Thursday and then yesterday he called me and this was out of the blue. I didn't expect it. And he called me simply to encourage me. Simply to encourage me. He said that my, I ran across his mind and he felt the need to just call me up and to encourage me. And now what part of his encouragement, however, right? Because sometimes when we think about encouragement, we only think about encouragement as far as as somebody uh, pumping us up and motivating us and telling us some good stuff. But part of his encouragement was also challenging to me. And the reason why part of his encouragement was challenging to me is because he said, Vaughn, like, OK, while you might be in this this weird situation where you are searching, let's say, for uh, traditional means of employment. Right. Don't neglect some of the stuff that you are skilled with. That's not traditional. Don't 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 neglect some of the some. Of, right. We talked about David and Goliath the other day. Right. And I didn't even mean to go here, but don't neglect some of the stones that are already in your hand. And while traditionally, and this is tough for me, y'all. This, this is tough for me because, because usually in any type of space, whether you're talking about traditional employment or untraditional employment, there are certain types of qualifications that people usually will expect you to have. Yes. Right? And it's weird, though, because, because when I think about the challenge that he gave me to use what's in my hand, I'm thinking about David, who David was not qualified to be a soldier. And the people who were qualified to be a soldier ran from their duties. And David, who was qualified to be a shepherd, right, his shepherdness, remember we talked about that, actually qualified him to go and fight Goliath. But the thing, I should have particular qualifications, right? And watch this. It's not just that, but, but the places that I'm trying to go usually expect that I would, that like, when they look, they're like, oh, well, wh what are the credentials that this person has, Right? And so sometimes I'm like, it seems like things aren't going to go the way that I would want it to. But the challenge that he said is like, listen, don't worry about that. Just worry about what's in your hand to do. Mm -hmm. Pastor said, right? And so when I thought about that, all of a sudden I thought about this one particular verse. And y'all can go to it if you want to. If you don't, if you don't want to, that's okay. I'm going to read it for you. But all of a sudden, the verse that came to mind was Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. And this is what Matthew verse 28, 19 says. It says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Let me read that one time from the message. That was King James translation. Let's take a look at what the message translation says. Matthew 28, verse 19. And it says, Go out and train everyone you meet, far and near, in this way of life, marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so as I thought about that, the, the, as I thought about that, I was like, man, God, like, like, I don't know why this was so heavy on my mind, but, but I was like, God, what are you saying to us? And, and, and the, the notion that I got was that in spite of the fact, potentially what God is saying is, is listen, you may not have the numbers that you would like to have here. Or for some people, you may not have, let's say, call it the employment that you would like to have. But what I believe God is saying is that if you want to change that, if we want to change that, then the first thing that I'm saying to you as a church and the first thing that I'm saying to you all as individuals is that you're going to have to go. You're going to have to go. Right. And this is the interesting thing. This 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 is some of the stuff that I that I got gleaned from the word go. The word go entails or means that that whatever is going to be done can't be done from right where you are right now. Amen. And the word, the word go means that, that we are here, but 
us just being here is not going to allow us to grow. And us just being here is not going to allow us to, to get what, to, to see and experience the growth that God has for us. And don't just think about it at just as far as growth here, um, as far as numbers in the church, but also think about it as far as growth as different areas of your life. If you're going to grow, right, we've, one of the prayers was about prayers of relationships, it might require us to move from here a little bit and go out. Yeah. And here's the challenging thing about, about going, and I have, I have some notes here. Going requ- the, the reason why going is challenging and the reason why, why it was a challenge, what Pastor Hill said to me yesterday, is because going requires some, uncom- some levels of uncomfortability. Going means that we're going to have to get out of our comfort zone a little bit. Going means that we might have to open up our mouths in a way that or and say some stuff that we might not really be used to saying or comfortable saying. Right. We might not feel even qualified to say. Right. We might have to take some actions that we don't necessarily feel qualified or comfortable taking. Right. So 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 it says for you to go. Which means that you have to, if we're at point A, we have to get to point B. Which means that, that, here's one of the challenges that we have here, right? One of the challenges that I have is that I'm not from this community. And I'm not necessarily sure exactly where to go if I were here. Now, if you talk about Uniondale, New York, right? Uniondale, New York is, is a lot easier for me, right? Because if I'm in that context, I know, I, like, I know that area. And, 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 and this is one of the things I want to get to, right? One of the things I want, it says to teach, one of the parts of that verse says to teach all nations. I'm going to be just jumping around everything, but I just want y'all to get the points, right? Teach all nations. But one of the things that I noticed that Jesus did with the, with the uh, disciples is that he told them to simply start where you are first. Right. So he said to go, but he's like, listen, go. And yeah, we want to teach all nations, but I'm not necessarily requiring you to go that far at this time. Right. I'm just requiring you just to just to take a couple of steps out. And one of the things that I want us to understand is that from that and what, what I'm gleaning from that is this. I don't think that God is necessarily asking for us to go far out. But there are some of us in here who know this community. And, and, and I think that what God is saying is, listen, can we master just reaching just this community? Right. We, we don't got to worry about getting out to Fredericksburg, but can we just master just this community? Can we know? Can we begin figuring out where to go in this community? Where would he have us to go in this community? And watch this for your own personal lives. Right. What is what what is the one step that God might be saying? Listen, just take just this one step that could help you to go. And it's challenging because I know that me going is going to require me to make some phone calls. It's going to require me to maybe step out and go and walk up to some institutions. Right. It's going to require me to figure out who are the movers and shakers. Uh, A pastor said specifically, he's like, I want you to ruffle some feathers. Right. Stir some stuff up. Right. And and, 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 and truthfully, truth be told, I don't like to stir stuff up. I hate stirring stuff up. I like peace and quiet, right? I like, I, I like smooth transitions. But if success is going to happen, it's going to require me to stir some stuff up. It's going to require me to figure out who is the person in charge of making certain decisions. And, and, and by me figuring out who's in charge of making certain decisions, we can get certain things done. And so, and so we collectively also have to figure out how do we begin doing that for this community if, if, we want to experience, watch this, the growth that we know that we can experience. The growth that we can experience, right? So go, and, and the main thing that I want y'all to get from that is that God is not saying for us that we have to go um, far out, right? But a lot of times when God is asking us to go, it's just a simple, it's, it's a simple, simple step, an uncomfortable step maybe, but a simple step. So what, how is God telling you to go as far as your employment? How is God telling you to go as far as your finances? Is he asking you to maybe give a little more? And I'm not necessarily even just talking about giving only to the church, but is he asking you to, to, to make a part of a, a consistent part of your finances, uh, an offering that you can dedicate to helping somebody else? 
And I'm not saying that he is saying that, but I'm just asking the question, right? In, in your relationship, is he asking you to start going to some places that you aren't used to going in order to build new relationships? Hmm? Right? Is, is he asking you... Is, is he asking you maybe maybe you can experience a, a different level of um, uh, in your employment if you actually begin talking to your boss instead of avoiding your boss? <laughs> right. Instead of trying to duck and dodge your boss every day. Maybe the little thing that he's asking is simply that we just get on time to the job. Right. But how in what way in what way is God asking us to go ye there for in what small way is he asking us to go ye there for? And then watch this. He says, and, and, and he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Right? And, and, and while we know, we, we, we know in, in, in a very technical sense, it, it's talking about literally baptizing people, right? But I want us, us to expand our view just a little bit and not only think about baptizing people as putting them underneath water. But what I want to, and, 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 and not just the baptism by fire that we know about, right? Which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? But, 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 but think about this. When I think about a baptism, I'm thinking about somebody who is fully submerged. And to be fully submerged, it, it, it means that you're dedicated. And when you're fully submerged, right? When, when you're fully submerged, there's evidence of that because even when you come out of the water after being fully submerged, somebody can tell, can tell that you've been in water. Yeah. Even after you've come up out of the water, right? Why? Because you're dripping and soaking wet with that thing, right? And so one of the things that I, one of the things that I want to challenge us uh, uh, is, that, is that you can baptize somebody with your words, with your conversation. Yes. And, and, and think about baptizing them in the name, right? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, right? What if we reached a place to where we were able that, that whenever we opened up our mouths, people were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? What if their names were, were rolling so much off of our tongues that people were bathed with it, were baptized with it, right? And watch this. Watch this. Not just saying it for the sake of saying it, because we have a lot of people. There are a lot of people who who are saying the name of Jesus and who are saying the name of God the Father and of the Holy Spirit often, right? But it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's always productive. But what if, what if we couldn't help but to talk about them because it was evident of what they were doing in our lives? And, the thing that I'm, and, and what I'm trying to say is that some of us, watch this, talking about qualifications again, right? Sometimes we feel like it's the need that we have to give somebody a Bible study, right? When simply God might say, listen, the best way for you to baptize people in the name of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is simply to tell them about the testimony of what the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit have been doing for you. So when I so when I think about it, Elder Hilton, when I think about the fact that that you had to pull over to the side of the road, but then all of a sudden help was sent your way. Help that you didn't necessarily call anybody for. Right. And I imagine what I imagine what somebody would say when they hear that testimony of what God did for you when you didn't even ask for it. And what about the other testimonies that we have in this church about what God would do for us when we have stuff that we didn't even know to ask for. But God just hooked us up and we let people know, listen, y'all are going through some stuff, too. And listen, there's a God that hooks me up even when I forget to ask for certain stuff. Right. Simply because I've chosen to be connected with him. And if you would just connect with him also and be baptized by him, then you could have that same type of relationship. Baptizing them in the name and of, of the father and of the son. And of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, right? But if we go back to verse 18, look at what it says. It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, right? And then let, 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 let's see what it says in. Um, in the other version, in the other version, it says, Jesus un undeterred went right ahead and gave them this charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you. Right. 
I like what it says in the King James Version. It says, go ye, and the word that it uses is therefore. So, so in essence, if you pay attention to that, it's saying, go ye because. Which means that because of what? Because of something that just happened that he just mentioned in the, 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 the verse before. Which means that the, the verse 19 is within the context of verse 18, which it says, I'm, listen, the authority that I'm giving you to do all of this is because all power is given unto me. Right? And, that's, and listen, what he's saying is that that's all you need to qualify you, is the fact that all power is given unto me. <laughs> right? You don't even got to worry about whether or not, don't even worry about your own power. We're, man, thank you, God, because one of the challenges that I have, right, and I, come on, I'm being real, and we have to be real. Most of us as Christians go through the same thing, is that we want to do some good stuff, but the good stuff that we want to do, we have good aspirations, but we want to get it done in our own power and our own strength. Right. And we watch this. It's, it's not like we mean well. You know what I'm saying? It's not like we want to do a bad thing. We want to do a good thing. We want to accomplish a good thing. And we think that God is saying, listen, you've got to like you've got to be better in order for this to, to be accomplished. And God is we forget that God that Jesus is saying, no, listen, the whole point that I've come is because you don't have the strength to do it anyway. But I have the strength and I have the authority. And because of that, I've commissioned you. Yes, sir. Amen. So watch this. So, so, so God is saying, listen, go ye therefore because, watch, you, you might not be qualified according to man, but according to me, you're qualified. Yes, sir. Because I will be the one that infuses the power into you to make it happen. Go ye therefore. And so watch this. It says, and, and, and I just want to connect this thing, this theme, as I close, I want to connect this theme of the name because it says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them, watch this, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And I just found that, I think that's interesting because we, in, in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 7, it talks about a name also. And what, 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 what I'm thinking is that, and, and, and the thought crossed my mind this week that, listen, God is asking us to go ye therefore. And God is also asking that we would not take the name of the Lord our God in vain. And oftentimes we think about that being in the sense of, of, saying, you know, uh, you know, be careful not to just use God's name casually, right? But what about when we call ourselves Christian or what have you, but then God asks us to go ye therefore in his power and in his strength, in his name, and we choose not to do it. And as I thought about that, I was like, wow, that's still taking the, Lord, the name of the Lord thy God in vain. We use in his name, we call on ourselves a certain thing, we're claiming to have the authority of his name, but then when we, he asks us to operate in the authority of that name, we fail to do it, right? And so two weeks ago, we talked first about the first commandment, right? And two weeks ago, we talked about having no other gods before me, right? God wants our full attention. And then the week after that, last week, we talked about how, how God does not, God is uncontainable. And let's not minimize who God is to a little idol or, or something that we can control with our own hands, something that we can pick up and move around to an image of him. Let's not bow down to, 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 to false gods, to things that we can make our, on our own, to our own works in essence, right? But then also, let's not take the name of the Lord our God in vain. Let's not call ourselves a certain thing. Let's not take, his, take on his name, but then fail to do the things that he's asking for us to do on his behalf. And I believe that when we, when we stop just calling ourselves Christians, when we stop just calling ourselves um, a church, uh, and when we begin to remember that God is asking us to go and that he's given us that power to go, that we will begin to see this church begin to fill up again. And not just that, not just that, right? Because, because I, I, want to, I want to be careful because sometimes, sometimes when preaching, we only talk about the collective and we only talk about just the church, right? But I believe that God is a very personal God and there's things that he wants to do in your personal lives. 
And I believe that he, I believe that God thinks that the best ministry is when our, our lives are in order. When, when, when everything about our, our life is flourishing. From, from, from the material things to the things that are immaterial. Right? I believe that he wants us to have a well-rounded life that when people look at our lives, they see balance. Yes. And they see everything operating as it should be. From our car operating how it should be, to everything in our homes working, to us being able to pay our bills, right? Because I just believe that that's the strongest testimony that we can give to Christ. Amen. And so that is the sermon for today. That, that's what I wanted to leave with us today. You know, I know that was a strange way to get to the third commandment, <laughs> right? But, but, but I was trying to, that, that's why I said that it's challenging for me because I'm like, you know, I, I believe God wanted me to talk about that, that commandment, but I believe he also wanted me to talk about go ye therefore. And I'm just glad that God showed me how to piece that thing. I certainly, watch that, I certainly can't take credit for that. But I believe that God wanted to figure out a way to tie that thing together for us here. And so I just ask that, 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 you know, who here is, is, is willing to take on that challenge of going ye therefore? You got some people that are willing? Good, good. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just praying we don't have to overwhelm ourselves. We just need to know what, what has God done for us lately? Can we at least tell that? Can we at least baptize people in that and show them and, 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 and allow what God is working in our lives to be a testament to them and what he can do in their lives? And so, Father God, thank you for the few of us who are here today. And we thank you for those who couldn't even make it, Father God. And we even thank you for those who will simply watch this as a video later on. That, that, that there are people who are dedicated to saying, listen, we are willing to get back to taking up the challenge of going ye therefore. And we are, we are committed to no longer take your name in vain, Father God, but that we are committed to, to, to if we're going to call ourselves followers of Jesus Christ, then we will do what he tells us to do, Lord. We will go there for Lord. And we, we praise your name. We're glad. We're thankful, Father God, because when we look at ourselves, we are not qualified. When we look at ourselves, we have some skill, but we don't have the skills. Right. We, we, we have a stone. But truthfully, Father God, a stone should not be able to defeat a Goliath. Who is trained in war and big and scary. But you, you have said that, listen, the lucky thing that we, that, that, that we can be confident in is that faith is the victory. And the faith says that, that we don't have to go about it in our own strength. But that, but that we will, you told us that, that, that we can go ye therefore because all power is given unto you, Jesus Christ. And because all power is given unto you, you are able to do all the work and you are able to fill in all the gaps that we can't fill. And you are able to get it done. So, Father God, I ask that this week, starting now, that you would figure out, help us to figure out how is it that we allow you to work your power through us so that you can accomplish what you need to accomplish. That we will be able to say, like, listen, you're, we are just the vessel. And the things that are happening through us, are, we can't even attribute to ourselves. We have to point the finger back to you, Father God. And we know that you are able and willing to do all these things, Father God. And so now I ask that you would do it, that you would accomplish it. And watch this. Do it. We know that you're going to accomplish it anyway, Father God. But we ask that we would be a part of your team. Don't pass us by, Father God. Allow us to, to join in with the infinite one, Father God, in, in accomplishing the work that he would like to do here in this community, in our personal lives and here on this earth. We ask in your most holy name, I pray. Amen.